So now we'll move on to our correction factors, okay? It says here ambient temperature correction factors. The ambient temperature surrounding the conductors can also have an effect on the opacity of the conductors. Well, of course it can. Um, remember, everything we discuss is about the heat. We just talked about adjustment factors, which means that if we know these conductors are carrying or creating heat, and we put a bunch of them in this conduit, that's going to increase heat, and we need to compensate for that. We need to derate for that. Same thing with the ambient temperature. Um, if I'm running through an attic, which seems to be the thing we always go to because that is hot, um, if I'm running a conduit through an attic, I need to adjust the, or I'm sorry, I need to correct because this is correction factor now, I need to correct the rate, the wire, so that way it can handle both the heat of the conductor and the heat of the temperature, okay? Um, does that make sense, right? Remember, everything we do is trying to control heat. So we need to derate for the number of current carrying conductors in a conduit and for the ambient temperature. So adjustment factor, number of current carrying conductors in a conduit, Correction factor is our ambient temperature. Our correction factor is not any harder than adjustment factor was. Just got to know where to look. Okay? So if we go to our chart here, all right, it says ambient temperature correction factors. Okay? So the first thing I want you to notice is that we have our Fahrenheit over here. That's pretty much what we're going to use most of the time. But sometimes maybe I'll give you a question or somebody will give you a question in Celsius. And you should know where to find that as well. Okay? Um... From there, we have conductor temperature rating. All right, then I have 60 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, and 90 degrees Celsius. Well, what does that relate to? Well, if we take this chart or table and go back to this table, what I want you to see is that we have 60 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, and 90 degrees Celsius with its Fahrenheit listed, okay? If I'm doing a problem that says THHN, all right, I'm going to look here and see that I'm in the 90 degree because I have THHN right there in the 90 degree. So when I need to supply a temperature rating, all right, that is in the 90 degrees category, okay? So if, let's say, I have 130 degrees, so we were between 123 and 131, as I come across, I would have to put an adjustment factor of 0.76, all right? You see how that works? Uh, For the problem we just did, THWN was in the 75 degree. Okay, so let's say I had um, 130 again, okay? That would go to a 0.67. Okay, do you see how to use this chart? This is the ambient temperature chart, which, by the way, this chart is 31015B2A. Okay, down to 31015B2A. That's where you'll find the stuff in the code book, and it's an important that you guys know that you can find the stuff in the code book when we get back to class and we can actually use code books. So now let's do a correction factor. All right, I'm going to reuse the same things we just went over here. All right, so we're going to bring one down to one. So these are both with problem one, except this is now going to be correction factor. Okay, so what we did was we we did the adjustment factor. All right, we found that number 60 HHN, 75 amps times 0.7 gives us 52.5, which is more than the 50 we need. But now I want to say that we are going to run this conduit through a um, attic that can get up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this last line here again, because that worked for us, right? I'm going to say number 6. T H H N 75 amps times 0.7 equals 52.5. Alright, so all I did was copy that down to here. But now let's find that 130 degrees Fahrenheit for T H H N, which again T H H N is in the 90 degree chart or the 90 degree column. So I'm going to come back to here. So I'm looking for 90 degree, and we're looking for 130 degrees. So 130 degrees is between 123 and 131. So I come all the way over, and I have a 0.76 correction factor. So now I'm going to take that 52.5 times 0.76 equals, um, I've got 52.5 times 0.76 equals 
39.9 no good okay because if we look back up at the top here we're looking for that 50 amps now I only have 39.9 that's a problem so the only thing I can do now is keep running that problem over and over again or running that process over and over again so I'm gonna say okay we just did number six THHN was good to 75 well now I got to jump down one to number four or yeah which is 95 so now I'm gonna take a number four THHN good to 95 amps times 0.7 equals 5 times 0.7 equals 66.5 all right, so so far these are all amps that's good but I still have to put in this all right so times 0.76 that equals 50.54 all right so 50.54 is rated for the 50 amps we needed for problem one remember this problem and this problem go to bed together this was adjustment factor this is correction factor Alright, so this here is not good enough. So now, let's just review that. We took 50 amps, alright, with 7 current carrying conductors, or we're looking for 50 amps and 7, cir seven, cir seven current carrying conductors. Alright, so out of that 50 amps, we found that number 6, can, when derated for adjustment factor, is 52.5. That is enough. So if that was our only issue, we would have been good. But then we said, nope, we're going to run that conduit through an attic. So we came down here, and that correction factor for 130 degrees we found was 0.76. So we took number 6, did all the stuff we did up top, found it to be the 52.5. Then we times that by 0.76, and we found that it was only good to 39.9 amps. Okay, so that's no good. That no longer meets the 50 amps we need. So then we upsized the wire once more. And we went to a number 4 THHN, which is good to 95 amps. We times it by 0 0.7, which equals 66.5 amps. All right. Then we put our, so that's the adjustment factor. And then we came here to put in the correction factor, and we ended up with 50.54 amps. Okay. That meets the requirement. So with the rating and correction factor, we're forced to put our 50.54 amp circuit on a number four THHN wire. Um, these really aren't that hard. The hardest part is finding the answer or the 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 um, the, the amounts in the code book, or in this case, your textbook. Um, so from there, now let's go to uh, the second one. All right, uh, the 60 amp THWN conduit with eight conductors. All right, we found that, and now I want to find the correction factor for that because we're getting to the bottom of the page here. I'm going to rewrite it up here so that we can see it better. So I have adjustment factor. All right. 60 amps THWN conduit with eight conductors. All right. We started off with a six that would adjust it down to 45.5 or derated down to 45.5. Number four derated down to 59.59, still less than the 60. Number three derated down to 70. That was good. Okay, so let's just do the correction factor one more time. So I'm going to take this bottom line and I'm going to rewrite it. So number three, THWN at 100 amps times 0.70 for the adjustment factor is equal to 70 amps. But now we're doing correction factor. I should also put in that the correction factor is going to be for 125 degrees Fahrenheit. I need to go to this chart. But the important thing to remember here is that we're dealing with THWN, not THHN anymore. So we need to make sure which one of these charts we want to use, which THWN is actually in the 75 degree chart. So that we come over here to this one, we're looking for 125 degrees, which would be between 123 and 131. All right, and we come over and we're going to be in that second shot, right, with that 75 degrees. So I have a correction factor of 0.67. So now I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to take the 70 amps and multiply it by 0.67, which will equal 70 
times 0.67 equals 46.9 amps. Alright, so with the correction factor now, so with adjustment and correction, I'm sorry, adjustment and correction, we are now at 46.9, which is way low for that 60 amps we need. So, we keep doing the same process over and over again. We'll start with uh, derating. I'm sorry, we'll start with adjustment factor. So, we just said a number 3 was good to 100. A number 2 is good to 115. So, I'll take my number 2. T H W N is good to 115 amps times our 0.7. 115 times 0.7 equals, that'll equal 80.5 amps. All right, times our correction factor. So, times 0.67 equals 53.935 amps. Again, that is not good enough because we are looking for 60 amps of current to flow. So our next one, if we keep looking down, so we just did our number three is good, I'm sorry, number two is good to 115 amps. All right, let's go to number one, which is good to 130 amps. Okay. So we'll write number one, T H W N is good to 130 amps times 0.7. So 130 times 0.7 equals 91 amps. Okay, now we need to multiply that by the correction factor. 0.67 equals, oh, no, nope, did that wrong. So 91 times 0.67 equals 60. Oh, 0.67 equals 60.97 amps. Okay. So now, if we look, we're looking for that 60. I've got 60.97. So that matches that. So everything is happy. Let's review this real quick. What I did was to do an adjustment factor, which is for the number of current carrying conductors in a conduit. We had 8. All right. So we had to supply a 70% adjustment factor. So this part right here, that's the adjustment. Okay, adjustment factor, this is all derating. All right, so we derated a number six to 45.5. We derated a number four to 59.5. We derated a number three from 100 to 70. Okay, but then I went and put it up in an attic. Okay, so what we did was took the same numbers down. We still applied our adjustment factor. Okay, so we still applied that adjustment factor, but then we had to supply the correction factor, which ended up being here. Okay, so we have adjustment adjustment and the correction so what started off in a perfect scenario could have been a number six good to 65 amps because of derating we ended up with a number three to 70 amps all right so that was for the adjustment factor for the number of current carrying conductors in a conduit then we go to the correction factor because it's ran in a hot attic and we had to do um we went from a number three good to 70 amps and we reduced that to 46.9 Ultimately, all the way up, we skipped two, and we went to one, which is good to 130 amps in the perfect scenario. But with the adjustment factor, it became 91 amps, which still would have been good. But then with correction factor, that is now 60.97 amps. So that meets the 60 amp. So with adjustment and correction factors, which is, are both forms of D rating, all right, we now, to run a 60 amp with eight conductors in a conduit through an attic, we need to run a number one THWN, okay? All right, so it's really not that hard. 
the hardest part is finding the information in your code book that you need to answer the problems. Last thing we need to go over is conductor identification. All right. And it says here that the NEC requires that all electrical conductors be suitably identified. That's really important, right? We need to know what the hots are. We need to know what the um, neutrals are and obviously grounding. And we need to not mix them up, all right? This is accomplished by having the proper marking and insulation coloring. So proper marking, insulation covering, all right? Uh, coloring, not covering, coloring. These two methods ensure the correct type is used during the installation and that uh, the conductive purpose can be identified at any time. All right, so basically what I just said. All right, the marking is a series of letters, words, trademarks, and numbers that reveals key characteristics about the conductor. All right, it then goes on to say what needs to be on that marking. We need a voltage rating. We need insulation type indicated by a letter or letters designated in the NEC. We need the manufacturer's name, trademark, or other distinctive markings by which the organization uh, responsible for the product can be readily identified. We need to have the size, all right, American wire gauge or circular mill. Um, cables must also have the markings that include the number of conductors and the outer finish of the covering. All right. Up here, we go to insulation color. All right. So, color coding of insulation on conductors is also used to identify wiring. Although the NEC does not specify colors of on-grounded conductors, the preferred colors are black, red, blue, and yellow. Okay. Black, black red, blue, yes. Yellow, a little bit. So let's talk about that for a minute. Typically, you'll find black, red, blue for 120, 208. All right, and then you'll find brown, orange, yellow for 277, 480. Don't want to confuse you, but those colors there. I'll explain in a minute about the coloring. Um, if we go to this chart, It'll help, hopefully, organize a little bit more. It says conductor type, on-grounded conductor, right? Insulation color can be black, red, blue, and yellow. Remember the black, red, blue will be uh, 120, 208, and yellow, brown, orange, yellow would be 277, 480. That's the way I've always learned it. Uh, but any color other than those listed below can be used to identify an on-grounded conductor. So any color, you know, pink... Uh, purple, you know, any of that you can use as a hot conductor. What you can't do is use any of the ones that we're about to talk about from here on out. All right, so remember now we have our on-grounded conductor, which is the hot, all right? Then we have our grounded conductor, which is neutral, right? Six American wire gauge or smaller. It says white or gray, and then it does say three continuous white stripes along its entire length on an, the other than green insulation. But we're going to focus on that white and gray, Okay. As we talk about this white and gray, remember I was just talking about black, red, blue being uh, 120, 208. Well, typically white will go with that, or white goes with black, red, blue. All right, and then on the flip side, 277, 480, gray will go with that. That is how I was always instructed to do that. Um, so that is how it goes. All right, so the next chart, or the next spot down, it says grounded conductor larger than six. All right, still sticking with that white or gray. So, see, they're very worried about our white or gray, because that neutral is really important. All right, so white or gray, three continuous white stripes along its entire length on other than green insulation. All right, so I hope that this, um, if we think about our rules of a three-way circuit um, with the white uh, should never be a traveler, this is why we... They're very specific that the grounded conductors have to be white or gray. So we don't want to screw people up by having a white wire be the traveler rather than the neutral. We always want to, if possible, keep the white as the neutral, okay, um, or the grounded. And then we have our grounding, all right. Grounded conductor, six American wire gauge or smaller, can be bare, green, or green with yellow stripes. All right, so that's the grounding conductor, and then the grounding conductor larger than six has to be green. Okay, so ungrounded, grounded, grounding, like we always talked about. And down here, again, this just talks about the markings and what you should find on a cable or a um, conductor, all right, from, from the markings we just talked about. All right, so again, with that said, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all safe, happy, and healthy. I hope this video helps. Um, 
any questions, always please contact me and uh, stay safe, um, be healthy, and hopefully we'll be back in school soon.